Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I'm talking about my DIY auto top off system, uh, my DIY reservoir, as well as the controller and then the pump that I used. Um, hopefully you guys can get some ideas from this and make your own system. So in another video I already talked about my float switch that sits in my sump. Um, the pump that I have is uh, real small. It actually came out of one of those like fountains. Um, it's really low flow which is awesome. It won't shock the tank. Also, it's real uh, 0.09 amps, so it doesn't require much power. Um, I was able to get a quick connect fit in, which threads quarter inch. I was able just to kind of tighten this in there nice and tight, and uh, accepts this hard plastic line here um, that I got from Home Depot or Lowe's, and you just push it in there. It's a quick connect fit in. Um, then I can run this over to my sump. Also, you can just push this down, and the, the tube comes right out, so it's real simple. Um, I had this laying around the house, so it didn't cost me anything. Um, so hopefully you have something like this you can just, uh, you know, you have laying around your house, won't cost you anything to buy. You know, it seems the most expensive part for these auto top-offs is the computer and then the pump. The pumps, you know, even the aqua lifter pump is 16 or $17. Um, and so if you're watching this video, you're probably like, how can I save some money? So that's one way. Um, uh, this is my auto top-off reservoir I made. Now, it basically is a two and a half gallon tank. And um, even though you're probably like me and you want to make your own, I think it's almost simple just to go buy a small two and a half or five gallon fish tank. Um, you know, by the time you buy the, the silicone at five dollars a tube for the GE silicone one, and then you, you, you take the two days to put it together. Um, I had silicone everywhere. Uh, and I was able to silicone kind of the lid on, but most of the two and a half gallon tanks, um, I think are ten dollars and they come with a lid. So, uh, you know, and then of course you get the frame, which I don't have. So I'm undecided if I'm going to build a wood frame for it or if I'm just going to leave it like this. Uh, I think for now I'm just going to leave it how it is and I might just end up getting a small two and a half gallon aquarium from PetSmart or wherever and uh, actually using that because that comes with the lid that slides in if I remember correctly. Um, as far as this part goes, this is just again acrylic. Um, I heated this up uh, with that little pencil torch. Um, just real lightly and you can bend it with your hands and uh, you know acrylic super easy to drill holes into so I can get the the plug uh, from the pump will actually come out. That's the other thing about this pump it has suction cups on it so it'll stick right on this glass really nice and won't move around. Um, and then I just um, actually use some uh, PVC solvent right here to actually hold this little lip down. I'm trying to keep the evaporation down. I mean, I'm replacing evaporated water. I don't want to evaporate out of my auto, auto top off. Um, inside of the sump, uh, the freshwater reservoir, excuse me, is actually another one of those little um, real small, inexpensive eBay float switches. And that's just another piece of acrylic I bent and just siliconed it right to the back. The nice thing about the silicone and the plastic is it doesn't hold super tight, so if I ever want to remove it, it'll pop right off. Um, the other thing I did was um, it just has a little nut, so I can just unscrew it and slide it out. And what this is going to do is this will tell my auto top off computer here, hey, this is low, don't pump no more water. That'll save my pump. Um, even though this is a cheap, small pump, you might not have that. If you buy a $15 aqua lifter, you don't want to burn it up because you're out of water and your auto top off. Um, and again, I did the same thing, just has a USB. So let's talk about the um, uh, computer system here. Um, basically, this is an Arduino compatible and has an Atmega 328 chip in it with an Arduino, Arduino bootloader. Uh, this was this case. I always seem to have problems finding good cases for projects because this does deal with mains electricity. You know, do it at your own risk. Um, you know, if you don't know what you're doing with mains electricity or house wire or 120 volt AC, whatever you want to call it, then don't mess with it. Um, luckily for me, I have a little experience, and so I know what I'm doing. Um, I got a snap plug here. I don't know if you can see that, this is just a push-in plug. This is where my pump plugs into. Over on this side, this is actually just the IEC mains plug. And this box used to be a power supply for an old printer I got. So I was just able to crack the plastic open. This was the original plug location, so it fits perfect. And then um, I just cut a small hole for the small outlet plug. Um, small hole for two USBs and then power. So now I have a space for my um, uh, float switch here and then my auto top off float switch so the computer knows the status. Um, originally when I did this I tried to shove a transformer in here so I only had to plug it in once but that just it didn't work. It made too much heat 
and uh, just didn't work right. So I ended up just putting a DC plug, and you need like six volts or something. There's a uh, five volt regulator for the Arduino, but the relay uses um, it needs at least six and like 6.2 volts is the minimum voltage I found to switch it. So I just use a transistor to, to switch the relay, and then it gets the straight power from the DC plug. So I'll plug it in here, and uh, hopefully you can see what it says. So it's just a little boot up message. Um, it has a real time clock in it. And the reason why I did that is for, um, I wanted to know the last time it ran. And the way I have this program run is once it sees that this float switch is low, this float switch is low, the secondary one, and then this float switch is high, meaning that there's water in the system. So when this, these are low, it says, hey, I'm low on water. And then that one's high, which means there's plenty of water. It'll run this pump for, in this particular application, I found that in 20 seconds it pumps about a cup of water. And it'll only do that once an hour. And the way it keeps track of that is through a real-time clock. So I put a real-time clock in there so that it'll know the date and time that it ran. And then it also allows me to look and see what that date okay, is. Okay, so I'm going to get you a close-up of what the screen says. So I have it set up so that the light is always is off by default. This button here is the only external button, and it's actually programmed two ways. If you push it one time, it does um, it runs through just uh, the details of um, date, time, when the last time the system ran, how many times it ran. If you push and hold it, it'll actually run the pump. Um, so if you push it one time, you'll see that it says um, it'll display the status of the float switches, and that was fresh. Hit that again. Fresh is okay. Salt is okay. And then it also said um, uh, OK on there. Let me hit it one more time. And it says ran. So that'll that'll give me the hour the last time it ran. Tells you the date and time. And then the amount of times that it's ran and the last time it's ran. So um, you can't tell, but right now it, it just says fresh OK. Um, ran, which will be the hour once it runs. Um, the S2 was high and S1 is OK. So what high means is that the water's too high. So if I plugged in the float switches, so the way I have it set up is um, this float here is, is S1 and this float here is S2. So this is what it looks like when it's running. It says pump is running. Uh, run time is 20 seconds. That let me know how long it's selected to run. And that's, again, predetermined for my pump. Uh, and Arduino code of, okay, it needs to run for 20 seconds. So it's going to run. While it's running, the LCD light's on. Now it says pump is done, it's waiting. And that basically is to allow the water to stabilize inside of the sump. If I hit the button, it will says ran at 16, and that's because I have it set for military time. So the hour that it ran was 1600. Times one is one time, because the pump's only one once. And then that last screen there also showed you the time. And that's where it actually gives me the full time of, oh, 427, it actually ran. So now, because I have it set where it only runs once an hour, even if I change the status of that float, you can see it says add, it won't work because it knows, oh, wait a minute, it just ran. So what I'll do is I'll manually make it run, push and hold the button, that'll display some information, and it'll say pump is running, the relay kicks on, which gives power to um, this outlet, which will run the pump. So now if I hit the button, it'll tell me same 1600, but it actually taught today's date and time. It's around twice, and then it's 429. Now, none of these settings are saved in EEPROM, so if I reset it, then it'll say time run, it'll say zero. And eventually, my theory is, is that once I realize how long it'll take to deplete two and a half gallons of water, or whatever my top water reservoir is, I'll be able to tell the computer, hey, you're out of water, regardless of the float switch status, don't run anymore. The other thing I did was uh, drilled some uh, holes for some long bolts. Uh, these are some like um, uh, pitcher hangers. So I can just hang it right on the inside of my uh, stand, out of the way. Nobody will even know it's there. When I open the stand to do my feed, and I can just push the button, glance at it real quick, and uh, that's it. Um, this is just a label I made up to try to hide some of this ugly, uh, uh, you know, my cut marks. Um, that's the first time I've ever done a label, so I'm working on it. And I call it uh, RAC, which stands for Rex Aquarium Computer Auto Top Off, and that's it. All right, so. Go over my uh, setup here. I have uh, my freshwater reservoir with my pump. Uh, this is going to simulate my sump into a glass beaker. Uh, both my 
float switches and the float switch and the reservoirs connected. Uh, this goes, um, zoom out here, this plug here goes to the pump, remember, and this is just bringing power in for the pump. Um, so if I pull this um, float switch down, it's actually going to kick on the ATO and it'll run for 20 seconds. It should be about a cup, which is about 237 milliliters. So we'll pull that down. It will kick on the pump. Um, again, it says pump is running 20 seconds. And we'll come over here and you can see that the water is actually filling. So now it's okay. So we'll push the pump, the float back up. Now it's still running because I have it set up to run 20 seconds when it comes on. So it, it's done. It um, ran the pump. It's recorded my data. It told me how long it did and you saw that before. And then now uh, as you can see, it actually put about 200 milliliters in there this time, so it's a little low. When I did the test before with the five feet of um, the five feet of uh, tube in here, which is what I still have, um, it took 22 seconds. So I'm not going to need all five feet once I get it permanently installed. I just didn't know what I was going to do for a reservoir when I was doing the programming, and so what I want to do is leave myself a little room and cut it off.